Welcome everybody to my backyard in another edition of Taco Tuesday. This one focused completely on the salsa because when you have a great salsa, it almost doesn't matter what else you put in there. It could be roasted vegetables, some fresh cheese, a piece of grilled swordfish like I'm gonna do today, but it's really all about traditional flavors in salsa. So we're making salsa de molcajete, one of the most classic salsas in the Mexican repertoire. And it is made with all roasted ingredients or in the summer at my house, all grilled ingredients. So what I have in front of me here is ripe tomatoes. I actually like to choose smaller ripe tomatoes. This salsa will be a little bit juicier with round tomatoes, a little thicker with plum tomatoes. Then you have to choose what kind of chili you're going to be cooking here. Um, I, you, could, you could use the large jalapenos, those are available to everybody, and they add a sweetness and a lightness to the salsa. If you're a uh, spice fiend like I am, you might wanna put some uh, habanero chili in there. Or if you want just the solid green chili flavor that is so classic in Mexico, choose the serrano chilies. I've got three cloves of garlic here still in their papery husks. So now let's go over to the grill and let's talk about how you're gonna set this grill up to do this. Now, I have put one of these grilling mats on here because this will make my life a whole lot easier. Um, but I also have a perforated grill pan. If you put all of this stuff directly on the grill grates, you might be chasing it all around. It might fall down through and you're gonna be pulling it out. I, so I suggest that you either use a perforated grill pan or one of these grilling mats and then just put everything right on there. I'm gonna choose that really classic flavor today of the Serrano chilies. And this of course is to your own discretion. You can uh, put as many or as few in there as you like. And my cloves of garlic and the really nice thing about this is that they, they will get, the mat will get really hot and char these vegetables like what I'm looking for, um, but they won't fall down through. So we're gonna close up the grill. It'll take about 15 minutes. I'll show you what they look like in about that amount of time. Okay, take a look. It doesn't look pristine, but it looks delicious, at least delicious to me. Everything is roasted nice and dark. While we are making the salsa for this, I'm gonna grill a little piece of swordfish. I've just sprinkled it with some salt and put a little olive oil on it. And now I'm gonna take all of this stuff and slide it off onto uh, a tray to take it over to our cutting board here. I'll let this thing go there. And let's talk about making the salsa with all of these grill roasted vegetables. Of course, you could do this under a broiler or on a big cast iron griddle as well. Uh, so the first thing that we want to do, I'm making traditional salsa de molcajete in a molcajete, in a mortar, one that holds about three and a half cups. Take the stems off of the charred chilies and you really do want to get the, the char on them. And I'm going to add it to that our grill roasted garlic. The garlic should be on there long enough that it is really completely soft and tender. Um, so pull those out of there. Okay, so this is our first step with it now. We're gonna take the pestle and we're gonna crush it. You are in my backyard, so you hear, are hearing all of the street noises. It sounds like somebody's delivering something here. This is probably the most delicious smell you will ever encounter in your life. And that is roasted green chilies and roasted garlic pounded in a mortar. Okay, so now we're gonna one by one start adding the tomatoes to this mixture here. You can take the skins off of it or leave the skins on and then very gently just crush it to release the liquid. And these do have to be cooked all the way through. You wanna make sure that they're cooked all the way through. See, you can see how I just gently tap it so that I don't get it squirting around everywhere. As I said, this will produce a juicy salsa just because I'm working with round tomatoes here 
Now this one I'm going to just leave the skin on so that you can see how I can handle the skin part of it because it's got the most char on it. So I crush the meat of the tomato there and then using my pestle up against the side of the mortar I can begin to grind that into the mixture and it won't seem like you've just got a whole sheet of that of that skin in there. One more tomato and I think I may call it a day for this salsa. Now we've got two more things that we're going to add. Well three more things really because I'm going to put salt in it obviously. But uh, three more things to add to a classic salsa de molcajete. So look at that. Beautiful. I wish there was smell o vision so that you would have an opportunity to smell what this is like because it's unbelievable. So I have uh, some onions here that um, have been chopped up and this is the most important thing I can tell you about salsa making. Always rinse the onions before you add them to your salsa. And I'm going to need a little bit of cilantro up here to add to our salsa next. So take a little bit of this rinsed onion for a fresh crunch. Add as much or as little as you like. I think that looks like the right amount there. Our cilantro is next. And I'm going to show you the classic chop on it, which is to fold it under like that. And then very thinly slice it, stems and leaves and all. See how beautiful it comes out. When you get finished with the leaf part, as I am about to do right now. The stem ends you just pitch, but you have beautifully chopped cilantro here. So we're going to add that now to the mortar. And then the last bit that will go in here is our salt. Stir all of that together. And you have the most classic flavored salsa in the world, salsa de molcajete. Okay, it's about time to go check that swordfish. Okay, let's take a look at this beautiful piece of swordfish. I like it to be more or less medium rare on the inside. So it's going to need just a, I don't know, 10 seconds more on that side on the hot grill to make it what it needs to be. So let's take that back over to the cutting board. And of course with swordfish, if you cook it too much, it'll be harder to have it work beautifully on a taco. But this is cooked to that sort of medium rare state. So I can just cut it in long pieces like that. And then grab a tortilla from or a couple of tortillas from the hot box of tortillas put some gorgeous swordfish on there this is a great light meal for the summertime when you just want to simply grill a piece of fish and then top it off with a classic spoonful of grilled, grill roasted salsa de molcajete. Since this is sort of a modern taco, instead of putting leaves of cilantro on there, my suggestion is to get some of that little baby arugula and put that across the top. And boy, will that be good summer eating.